February the 25th, 2021. And I've been sitting in this room for the last eight hours without leaving this chair apart from just now to get myself a drink and realised I'd completely forgotten to eat or drink or do anything else today because I've gone completely down the rabbit hole. It's the last week of February album writing month and the obsession has kicked in Big time. So since Sunday's show, I've recorded five pieces of music. Um, one of them is a cover version of a track by somebody else on form. So I'm waiting for them to give me the final say before I post it or share it with you. But I have four pieces of music to share with you tonight. Reacco Music and Array of Emotions. Good evening to the two of you. Mel says, doing OK, thinking about cutting off my hair. Good Lord, woman, why? Make the most of hair while you've got it. Some of us don't have the opportunity. That's all I'm saying. Um, thank you to one and all. Thank you to my new followers, Januarius. You have followed me during... Sunday night stream. Hello to Moriarty, who also followed me during Sunday night stream. Always nice to have new followers. If you're watching the edited highlights of this on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It would really help. Uh, not that I'm going to get to the thousand subscribers limit for monetization anytime soon. But, you know, I'm in the 60s now. Uh, both figuratively and literally in terms of my age. But uh, there you go. Yeah, I've been completely down the rabbit hole. And, um, of course, new gear. New gear. Live 11 dropped, as expected, on Tuesday the 23rd. And I have been very, very, very much enjoying playing with it. few niggles, which we'll talk about when I actually start... Um, sharing some of the music that I've been making with it. But in terms of gear, I've fallen in love. I think I may have to be raiding the HFO piggy bank in a few months' time because Zoom, the people what made my Zoom G3 guitar effects pedal that I've had for Seven years now? Six? Seven years? I've had it for a while and it does lovely sounds, but it kind of doesn't play nice when it does amp simulations because it has a sort of nasty whine to it. Well, the NAM music fair isn't taking place, obviously, at the moment, so product announcements are just sort of filtering out on the internet. And this afternoon I came across this. Zoom have just announced the G6 and oh boy is it something special or what so it's basically you know seven years of technological development 
piled into the little G3 guitar pedal that I've got. It does all sorts of stuff. It's got an SD card slot so that I think somewhere on this page, which is appallingly badly designed, I have to say, Zoom, there you go. Without an SD card in it, you can loop with it for 45 seconds. With an SD card in it, you can loop for two hours of music in a performance. So you can do like Grateful Dead level sets just on your own. And it sounds really good built in expression pedal because the Zoom expression pedal that I've got, I had to buy separately and it's really not the greatest, although I have been using it a fair bit this week. So, um, yeah, and it's not that much more expensive than the one that I bought six or seven years ago. So uh, Riaco Music says, wow, it's fancy. Yeah, it's a floor foot switch, but it's got a touch screen on it. That was something I was thinking, have you really thought this through? But I guess it's when you're editing and creating stuff. So you can you can basically stack. Let's go back to the main camera. I'm just feeling silly talking to that little tripod cam over there. You can stack up to nine effects in series or various combinations. I think the the G3, it was five or six. And it had some which were like double slot effects. So if you put one of those in, then you lost a slot. Evening, Wobby. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, welcome. Um, we're just talking about new gear. I found a new guitar effects pedal that I've fallen in love with. And I will be raiding the piggy bank because this thing looks amazing. And I'm going to get one. And I will be obsessively playing with it in the couple of months from May, which is, I think, when it's going to be released in the UK, to 5090 starting on the 4th of July. So expect the unexpected when it comes to music on the 4th of July for 5090. And 5090, if you're wondering what on earth I'm blathering on about, is the Musical Challenge, which is the big brother of February Album Writing Month. February Album Writing Month, you have to write 14 songs in 28 days. 5090, you have to write 50 songs in the 90 days between July the 4th and October the 1st. And yes, I'm talking very quickly. And oh boy, that coffee has kicked in. So that's going to really help my sleep patterns this evening, isn't it? I have really, really been struggling with sleep this week. I got a bad rating from my phone for the sleep I got last night. So it goes. So without further ado, seeing as it's a Thursday and I've been very, very busy and I want to talk about Live 11, here's a song that I wrote before I'd got Live 11. And so, you know, it's February album writing month, you write what you know. So I wrote a song about waiting for Live 11 and it's called Waiting for My Upgrade. And uh, well, I'll just play it here. So yes, this is Live 11 you're looking at right now, but it was recorded in Live 10. So there we go. I'm waiting for my upgrade And now it's nearly time This song goes up to 13 But 11's also prime Come tomorrow morning When I get the call Gonna start downloading 
And that was waiting for my upgrade. And once I'd paid for Live 11, I could then go to my account page at Ableton and download a 2.2 gigabyte zip file of the installer for Live 11. And as you see, here it is. Um, the interface, I've, I've tweaked a bit because that's a 4K monitor and my eyesight's not what it was. So I've zoomed the interface up to 120% uh, of, of normal. The footprint of Live 10 was about 2.6 gigs and the footprint of Live 11 is 3.5 gigs, 3.6 gigs. So there's a lot more of it on the hard drive than there was in Live 10. There are some nice little additions to the interface. So the Explorer in Live 11, you can now add file types or you can add file sizes to sets and things that you've put together, which is really rather useful but it does weird things when you try to save a set as a template and why they couldn't just stick with the old preferences box of saying save current set as default set i don't know because now it starts creating untitled als files left right and center and it's like why are you doing that how did I make this strong? It's mainly pigments, it has to be said, which is Arturia's Spectral Spectrum Doohickey Synthesizer. Very, very, very pretty interface. All the colours of the rainbow. Uh, not quite sure what any of them signify, and I've been using the thing for about two and a half years now. But it's very good at making all sorts of beautiful noises. And after I created about three layers using pigments, I thought, am I going to just do this entire song in pigments and a bit of guitar? But in the end, I, uh, I, I chickened out. The bass line is Arturia's emulation of the Casio CZ101. And there's also, if I remember correctly, some Trash 2. There's lots of different sounds. So there's me main bass. Lots of breathy pads. Bit synclaviary that one, isn't it? And yeah, the CZ101's had um, Trash 2 dropped on it, which is um, a rather, rather shouty distortion from Isotope. And then, um, yeah, kind of pretty. And I have been continuing my, my efforts in playing triple harmony guitar. music says i like that sound which one mate um pigments is well worth getting if it was a pigments one um the the brass dis brash distortery one which is is this one the triple harmony guitar works says riaco thank you i'm so glad it's i'm just becoming a little bit obsessed with that that technique it has to be said i really am so that that was the That's the Iris 2, isn't it? Yes, that's the Iris 2. There we go. And the, the Casio is, is a bit, bit shattery. And if I bypass Trash 2, it sounds completely different. See? So if you've never tried dropping a distortion pedal, like a guitar effects pedal or an overdrive pedal, on your synthesizer signal, then do give it a go. The CZ sound is the one that Riaco likes. The trash makes it. It really does. But as I said in the chat, this one's me 
getting me old prog head on because I got bored with writing things in 4-4 and I, I dabbled with 6-8 in one track, or was it 12-8? in one of the earlier tracks on February Album Writing Month, but this time I went full on prog. This is in 13.8. And the way that I kind of followed the beat was that in the verses, it's counting four bunches of three and a one. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. But in the chorus, it worked as sort of five, three, five. So it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, which has more of a groove to it. But the um, I, I can't even remember where I got the uh, the. Oh, yeah. Odd Grooves, Odd Grooves website for non-standard drum grooves. And they're they're pretty darn good, actually. They were quite reasonably priced. So I put the metronome on, you can hear what, what the click track is. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Or one, two, three, four. No. Remember the beat, Chris. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Kinda works. So, Rekka Music says, I use trash on some vocals in Metropolis in the scene where the robot wakes up. I automated it to go from wet to dry so the vocals went from di Ah, oh, that's clever. I like that. Yes, I like that a lot. Vocals on this, mm, yeah, uh, I, I'm. Helen's Evil Twin said, "Have you have you got the Exfer Audio OTT compressor a few months ago?" And I hadn't, and and that's it. And it's a very very odd user interface because it doesn't do what normal compressor user interfaces do. And it has all sorts of different controls. So there's a time control rather than an attack and a delay and a release control. But um, I've been dropping it on my vocals pretty much consistently for the last half of February album writing month. And um, combining that to really sort of emphasize the dynamics in vocals, because OTT it is it does what it says on the tin. It is extremely over the top. It does bring out all the nuances and dynamics of your vocals, which is kind of what compressors are designed to do. And then I tame it using, of course, the Waves Vocal Rider, which is looks like that, which is just a big knob that it, it's effectively doing what you do by riding the faders by adjusting the volume. If it gets too loud, you push it down. If it gets too quiet, you push it up. Well, that's kind of what that that big slidery thing does. But it does it automatically, and it will write automation to an automation lane, lane in Ableton, which is rather funky. But I just let it do its thing, and I have had people saying nice things about how the vocal rider fits or how the vocals fit in the track a lot more since I started using it, as I have when I've been using the bass rider on the bass playing on my bass tracks. But yeah, one line, one line of verse of vocals in the verse, and just me standard three takes during the chorus, and then pan um, twenty right, fifteen left, and dead center for the vocals in the chorus, and yeah, nectar three, kind of is a bit of a no-brainer because I need a gate to cut out some of the hiss or leak through and then compression EQ. Bit of delay on this one because I think I used a preset rather than let it do its machine learning thing and just said, yes, I want exaggerated vocals. Reco Music says, do you feel like your performance has changed because of the vocal rider? If I'm honest, I think I'm I'm more inclined to take risks 
or just generally push my vocals into more dramatic areas than I would do before. Because I know if I do get carried away or get a bit too close to the mic and everything else, then the combination of OTT, which just makes everything dramatic, and the vocal rider, which just reigns in the excesses a bit too much, it's like, yeah, OK, I've got a safety net. I've got a safety net so I can I can take I can take more risks. Riaco says, what stopped you doing that before? Confidence, basically, in what I'm doing and realising that my voice is an instrument as much as any of the stuff behind me or in the racks over there or on the wall to my right. Uh, it's all a question of learning what works within a song that I'm capable of doing. And that's just as just as true of my voice as it is my guitar playing, my keyboard playing, my bass playing, my stick playing or whatever else comes to hand. Oh, and that is one thing that uh, HFO's top tip this week. I went round all my little gadgets, like my metronomes, and yes, I have two metronomes and my stylophone because you remember I, I opened up the Ebo on Sunday show and said, yeah, it's just basically a storage compartment for a battery. Don't leave batteries in things too long, kids. I literally managed to rescue my stylophone as the batteries in it were just about, you could just see the casing on the batteries, the uh, the little AA batteries in it, you could see the casing just beginning to distort and split. And as I took it out, it actually came apart in my hand and covered my hand with nasty battery stuff. And frankly, I could go and wash my hands. It was much better that it did that than it did that over the insides of my stylophone. So I then went around and took the batteries out of everything else I could find that I'm not using on a regular basis because, yeah, batteries leak. Battery goo, says Riako, and she's not wrong. It's not nice stuff. So in February album writing month, at the moment, there are a lot of songs and quite a few of them have got zero comments. So there are 434 zero comment songs or zongs as they're referred to. Okay. Now you notice there are lots of interesting tags underneath people's songs like rock, poem, needing musical undertow, piano, collab, and other such glorious stuff like that. Some people are taking liberties with with tags, I think, or, you know, this is this has been a bugbear of mine since I joined February Album Writing Month 13, 14 years ago, because I'm kind of a bit of a Brian Eno obsessive and I've got something like 40 albums of he knows work in my collection and a few things that you know are only available from websites like he did a performance in bath abbey a few years ago and i've got that and it's brilliant so brian eno for those of you who are not aware of of the gentleman's career and quite frankly all of you lot know eno as well as i do and wobby and i actually wrote a song in which we used a recording of, of Brian Eno reading one of his oblique strategies cards as a guest appearance in it. And and he he's wonderful. But when he was undergoing an enforced stay, immobile in hospital, somebody left him a cassette recorder that was playing Packle Bell's Canon in D and said, oh, I'll just leave you this so you've got something to listen to and left it with the volume turned right down. And at first he said he found the fact that he couldn't really hear what was going on really, really frustrating. But then 
he kind of, being Eno, started thinking, oh, that's really interesting. You could almost have this as a sort of category of music that's just as capable of being ignored as it is listened to. And that became the, the central tenet of what became ambient music. And the first album that he released was discrete music that featured um, treatments of the aforementioned Packel Bell Cannon in D. It's really, really an interesting sort of musical field. And when you've listened to 40 odd albums of Eno's work, you start to realise what sort of things are ambient and what sort of things aren't ambient. Reaco Music says, hashtag ambient on a ukulele song, ugh. I hate misleading hashtags. People use them, and Bill White, hello, Bill, if you're watching, I think you absolutely hit the nail on the head. It's because the more hashtags you use, the more people are likely to come and listen to your song on the February Album Writing Month website and leave comments on it. So that's why people do it. But, yeah, it, and, you know, if it's a guy singing a folk song, then if he's playing guitar and singing, that's kind of not ambient. In fact, and somebody then said, oh, yeah, there's this there's this entire genre now called folk ambient. And Rekka Music says, but the hashtags are lies. And she's right. But, um, yeah, there is a, a genre now which is folk ambient, which is basically ambient music, i.e. there's not really a beat. And it's more about texture rather than, you know dancey stuff you don't dance to ambient music you fall asleep to ambient music if i'm brutally honest that's what it's for it's for chilling out it's for distracting yourself and if you want to be distracted by music that lets you drift off you kind of don't want it doing anything particularly noticeable like you know <laughs> drum beats or, you know, wub, 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 wub synthesizer lines. You know, it should be chiming bells and and soft, soft pads and ethereal vocals. Not words, but just lines, drawn out vocal lines. So as you have probably realised by this point, I get very wound up by people going, oh, I've just done an ambient track when they haven't at all. And a few years ago, I wrote a song and got very, very grumpy. In fact, I also got very, very grumpy in in the, uh, the form forums. And I think basically people just went, oh, Chris is having a rant. Let's just, just nod. But um, people are still doing it. So clearly my rant didn't help. So I decided that the way forward was to employ humour and do it good-naturedly because, you know, life's crap enough as it is without me ranting at people saying, what the hell are you doing? That's wrong. You know, and the Randall Munro's XKCD webcomic, which if you haven't checked out, xkcd.com, please do. He just draws stick figures, but he has a brilliant mind. And one of my favourite XKCD cartoons is just a stick figure man sitting at a keyboard in front of a monitor. And stick figure woman comes up and says, are you coming to bed? And stick figure man just says, I can't. And stick figure woman says, why? And stick figure man says, somebody is wrong on the internet. So with that, here is my interpretation of what happens when somebody is wrong in terms of assigning musical genres and tags to their music. This one is called A Question to the Curious. <laughs>
So, yeah, I see my view account has now absolutely plummeted to one viewer. Hello, Mel. So, um, yeah, that that really went well, didn't it? Hey-ho. But uh, I enjoyed that. There's an awful lot of BBC Symphony Orchestra on it. So, in preparation for the string quartet, what I will be writing this weekend, I've been getting into the BBC Symphony Orchestra plug-in a lot so I actually um, separated out there's cellos there's basses there's violas there's second and first violins so separate parts from from each of the string section in the orchestra. David is clearing up pat, cat poop, says Riaka Music, and Wobby says, I am still here. It did cut off, though. I'm, I'm glad you're back. It's, it's yeah, the um, the counter on, on OBS is a bit sort of wonky-ish, so I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just going to... Assume that you're out there and absolutely enthralled in in the stuff that I'm doing, because quite frankly, it deserves people being enthralled by it. I'm just that was the twentieth track that I've recorded for February Album Writing Month this year. Um, I've also been busy over the last couple of days, not just with the um, reimagining 
of a track that's already been posted on February Album Writing Month twice, but I listened to it and thought, you know what? I'd really like to hear this done as if it was like Bob Bob Ezrin produced Pink Floyd. So about the time of the wall, because the tracking involved, it was very much the sort of song that should be sung by Roger Waters at his most sarcastic and vituperative. So, um, yeah, this afternoon, that's kind of what I sat down and started doing. Um, Wobby says, well done. I am a bit behind schedule still. Reaka Music says, I'm impossibly behind Wobby123, but it's OK. If you're literally just thinking about making music and changing your mindset to becoming more amenable to be making music, then kind of you're golden in terms of February Album Writing Month. But, um, yeah, I've been busy writing songs. I've also tried to ramp up me commenting. So, as of right now, I've left 260 comments on other people's songs. I've busted 65 songs. So, in other words, I've been the first person to comment on a song with zero songs. But there are lots of zero comment songs still out there. In fact, uh, let's go over to the form website and see just how many there are. So if I refresh that now, there are 449 songs on the form website out there that haven't been commented on yet. And uh, I see I Am You has been busy. Hello, Neil. Um, so he posted one two minutes ago. And uh, Wobby says, I must get round to listen. Riaco Music says, I think I've only made form, four form songs and scoring kicked my ass. Yeah, but you are doing you are doing actual proper music music work at the moment rather than just entertaining yourself by by creating songs. But um, yeah, I, I'm looking forwards to to more songs from from both Wobby and from Riako. And Wobby, I know that I need to go back to your songs and listen to the ones that because uh, you've been a bit busier than than uh, than some, and I've not been paying attention. And I need to go and listen to them. I need to listen to to Mel's because I don't think I've at least left a comment to more than one or two of Mel's songs because there's so much going on. Um, yeah, Slothcore is still a thing. There are now 70 songs with a Slothcore tag. And as you can see from the blue one there, I've done another one because Slothcore and this is it. So this is the first track that I really sat down and started figuring out how Live 11 works. Because Live 11 has a whole bunch of additional packs, material for helping you make music. 30 gigabytes of packs I downloaded on Tuesday afternoon. I am so thankful that I do not still have a dial-up internet connection because I would still be waiting for those downloads to complete this time next month. One of the packs that I downloaded, in fact, the pack that took longest to download because it is eight and a half gigabytes of compressed audio files is called Drone Lab. And um, I got rather taken by Drone Lab. It has to be said, it is, as its name would suggest, a series of tools for making drones. And these drones are sort of atonal, although they have a root note and then overtones and stuff like that. But then I discovered that what you could do was, as you can see here, 
specify the root note for a particular drone. So this drone starts in A and just shuffles between A, D and E. So it's just, yeah, it's a 145 chord progression. So, but I then did the same thing with another drone, which is slightly different. And this also shuffles between A, D and E, but does it in a different order. And if I just play you one of these drones as it shifts from one state to another, it's kind of interesting. And it sounds really, really cool. So listen when it does a big a big shift in pitch. It's so cool. So it's instant Eno. It really is. Or quite possibly the strange heavenly music that's playing when Bill and Ted go to the future. But put two in with slightly different characters. Especially when they change upwards and downwards in different directions. And then drop a third one in that completes the triad, so it plays the missing notes. So I was, I was very, very taken by this. And then I thought, right, I'm going to add some synths to this. Mainly choirs. And this is called Things Go Awry in Human Resources. Resources don't often make it to the pearly gates. St. Peter says to Karen, Before I let you in, you have to choose whether to spend eternity in heaven or hell, and I'll give you a guided tour of both. So prepare yourself, for first I must take you to hell. But when they get there, it's beautiful. There's a lobster dinner, a permanent floating buffet, a luxury spa, golf courses, swimming pools. When they return to the pearly gates, Karen looks at St. Peter and says, You don't need to show me heaven. I know where I want to spend eternity. I'll spend it in hell.
Right you are then, says St Peter, managing to sound both resigned and surprised at the same time. And with that, he consigns Karen's immortal soul to hell. But when Karen arrives, the scene that confronts her is very different to the one that she saw when she was with St. Peter. It's a desolate wasteland. Most of it's on fire. Everybody is dressed in sackcloth and ashes, and there is much more screaming. Karen seeks out the devil and protests strongly. This isn't what I saw on my visit. Ah, yes, says the devil, but that was when you were a recruitment candidate. Now, you're just staff. Salutary tale for us all. Reacher Music says, cute. Wobby123 says, you couldn't have sounded more brizzle saying live 11. Where's that to? That's Gert Lush. That is. Yeah, I, I realised in replying to Wobby's comment just then that I have now been living down here for 26 years which is more than double the amount of time I've ever lived in any other part of the world. Quite extraordinary. So, yes, that was my spoken word, spoken word piece. And frankly, the only human resources joke that I know. And I thought I'd throw it in there. And uh, I actually tagged that as Slothcore because it does have, if you look on the... Um, on the automation it does have a dip in the middle for naps and all right it's not exactly dirty in the in the context that candle uh, specified when he invited invented the term but uh, i rather like that wobby says yep i am 26 years in this flat you do it, it's it's funny, it takes, I guess, the. I don't know if you get this. When you dream, do you dream that you're in the environment that you've spent most of your life in, i.e. the flat, i.e. somewhere like, you know, my, my house? Or do you still dream that you're in the environment that you were in when your brain started to put its map of the world together? You know, like your childhood home, for me, I sometimes still dream of living in Stafford, where we lived from when I was like eight years old to when I was 16. And it's like, I've, I've not lived there for decades. So why, why doesn't my dreaming focus more on where I live now? And in fact... I mean, I do dream occasionally about where I live now, but it took a good 15 years for the environment inside my head that actually powered my subconscious dreams to go, all right, yeah, so this is home now. And Riaka Music says, I dream about Seoul, my mum's house, a dorm and a hotel. It's weird, isn't it? And I dream of places that I'm quite sure I've never been to but consistently go back to those places and they have the same geography and the same features. And I have no idea where they've come from. Maybe it's films I've watched when I was little and they just made an impression on me in a way that boring old Stafford didn't. Who knows? But um, Wobby says, I dream of made up places where I've forgotten that I live there and go back and think, oh, yeah, I have this life and this place here that I have totally forgotten. Oh, yeah, that's. Um, yeah, I, I, I have had things like that. Well, and, and it's weird, isn't it? Because like anxiety, 
anxiety dreams, and I get anxiety dreams a lot, and apparently they are a way of your brain preparing yourself to deal with threats, which kind of makes sense, but I wish I didn't get so many of the damn things. And the whole PTSD thing as well makes your brain go, all right, well, this is going to end badly, so let's make it end badly, and then you can try dealing with it. And it's like, I'd rather not. I'd rather just sleep, please. That was my third Slothcore song. And we're now, what did I say, 70 Slothcore songs in February of a writing month this 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 year? It's, it's great how a completely non-existent genre can be made up and turned into a complete thing by, um, by people just embracing it. I rather love that. Riaka Music says, has anyone ever dreamt about a place you've never seen, but then at some point you see it in real life, then get a feeling of deja vu? Oh, um, there are places that I've been to that think, you know what, I've seen this place before, but in almost every case, I have then, a few years later, been watching a film and going... Oh, that's why I recognised this place as being somewhere that I knew because I'd seen it in a film. And every street corner in San Francisco, the first time I went to San Francisco in 1984, was just, I've seen this in a film. I've seen this in a film. I've seen Clint Eastwood standing outside this this film. It, it, it really does... Um, Films films expand our experiences, but our brains can then sometimes be a bit strange and incorporate them into our subconscious in a way that you think, that actually happened to you. And Ronald Reagan famously told a few stories of things that had happened to him in his life. And people then pointed out, um, that was a film you were in, Ronnie. So it does, yeah. The brain is a very, very strange thing. It really is. And that's when modern life is not trying to mess with your head to the degree that it does at the moment with us. And that's kind of where the next song that I've got for you comes from. So this one is called... See how cleverly I segued into this one? You know, it's almost like I'd rehearsed. This track, and it will all go horribly wrong now, so I hope Array of Emotions is prepared to gently mock me in the chat, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll soldier on and pretend that things aren't going to be totally wrong. This one's called Stranger Tractor. There's something lurking on the stairs Thank you. 
So that was Strange Attractor, or as Wobby immediately came up with a far superior title, Stranger Tractor, which would be more in keeping with the Bristol accent, really, as well, wouldn't it? And now I'm thinking I really need to do another song before February Album Writing Month finishes and I actually use that as a title. I really do. Stranger Tractor. It's got to be done. It's got to have vocals in it. It would just be me saying Stranger Tractor. Wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, it's got to be done. It will It will happen. Wobby, if you don't mind, I'm going to steal that title and just do exactly that. Do it, says Wobby. Brilliant. Racker Music says, is that a Bristol accent thing? Oh, it totally is. It, well, that no, that's... There is, there is a variant of the Somerset accent which is used by second order actors, which is known as Mama Zet because mummers, as in actors, tend to really lay it on with a trowel. But uh, or is it basically if you're if you're a Somerset farmer, or you want to portray the dramatic character of a Somerset farmer, you basically have a straw hat, you have a piece of wheat sticking out of your mouth, and you just go or, and and that's that's it. So. Riaka Music says, can you give me more Bristol accents? Well, so the one that I first encountered moving to... Let's go back to main camera because I'm staring at completely the wrong camera because that's kind of what I do and it's even immortalised in the main titles of the show these days. But So one of the first things that I encountered in Bristol when I moved down here was that people in the Bristol area have for some reason decided that the word specific is superfluous to modern language because there is an entirely appropriate to them word that, that can be used completely interchangeably and that is pacific as in ocean. So I, I encountered people, very, very bright people with degrees and master's degrees and the rest would go, can you be more Pacific? I was like, um, well, I, I'm not on drugs at the moment and um, I could probably chill out a bit. Riaki Music says, what? Yeah, it's absolutely true. It is the, the, the interchange of the words specific and pacific is is a big thing down here um what else the most famous these days i would guess note of appreciation of something down here if you're really 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 taken with something down here you say oh that's gert lush that is so that's gert in other words great G-E-R-T and Lush, L-U-S-H, as in Lush, Gert Lush. Um, other, other traditional Bristol salutations. When you get off the bus, then you are formally required to address the driver before you leave the omnibus by turning to him and saying, cheers, drive. Uh, if you don't know where something is and you are desirous of establishing its location then what you must ask is where's that to so there you go mel you now know a whole bunch of of bristolian accents dialect whatever you want to call it but um yeah it does occasionally drop into my speech and there's not a lot you can do about it and wobby who used to be a london bus driver used to like it when people got off with a thank you driver oh that's splendid and uh, yeah it has to be london doesn't it really to to get something and would have been done in received pronunciation, one is sure. Oh, uh, yeah, I love that. So let's go back to me. Uh, I say merci to the bus driver here, says Riaka Music. 
That's rather nice. Uh, that's not what I meant to click on. I meant to click on that one. There we go. OK, let's go. It is good manners, says says Bobby. Indeed. So I was saying to Mel, there's uh, an awful lot of guitars in this. And again, we've got the three part harmonies for that track and that track and that track. But then there are also three part harmonies in the jazzy chords in the middle section and the guitar solo. And so the reason this track happened, right, is because of this weird little chappy here. OK, and this is one of the new inspired by nature tools that um, that came up as one of the install packs in Live 11. And it's if I solo the guitar and turn off the effect, the guitar is is what started the track and it's doing this. So it's just a guitar chord. Right, a rare information says, why are there bouncing balls at the bottom? It's physics. Seriously, it's physics. So the idea is, if you turn these on, then the different sound sources interact gravitationally with each other. If you watch, they are actually, they're bouncing off the sides of the box, but then they do weird things with each other. And there are various attributes that you can tweak to your heart's content and I have absolutely no idea what any of them do but all I know is is that when you enable it it turns that single guitar chord into an entire rhythm section because it now sounds whoops it now sounds like this And if you watch the bouncing balls, you can hear how the filters affect the sound when the blue balls get into proximity with the orange ball. So cool, says Riaka Music. I, I spent an hour and a half just going through that big list of presets there going, oh, wow, I've got to do a track with this. And then I'd click on the next one and go, oh, I've got, I've got to do a track with this. So that is one of the really, really interesting and creatively very, very inspiring effects things that you get in Live 11. While you're here, I'll show you one of the other things that's a big change in Live 11, right? So if I want to add an audio effect, in Live 10, I just clicked on audio effects and just got an entire list of all my guitar audio effects but Ableton have organised them. Unfortunately, they've organised them for me. So now you get categories of effects. So you get delay and loop, drive and colour, dynamics, EQ and filters, modulators, pitch and modulation. So why you've got pitch and modulation and modulation is separate, then who knows? You've got reverb and resonance, and you've got utilities. OK, so here's a question for you. Here's tonight's, here's tonight's test. Mel uses Autopan a lot, right? So which of those categories, folks, which of those categories do you think you would find the auto pan audio effect and go.
And while you're thinking about and posting an answer, so there you go, it's delay and loop, drive and clear, dynamics, EQ and filters, modulators, pitch and modulation, reverb and resonance, or utilities. Where would auto pan, which basically just whacks something from side to side in the stereo mix, where would you put that in one of those one of those folders? While we're doing that, I will go over to this synthesizer track. Modulators says says Riaco Music. I don't know. Any anybody else want to hazard a guess? Let's have a look in modulators. Nope, not in modulators. So uh, that's one down. Anybody else? Anybody else think of any other places where you'd put something that just moves something from side to side? Side to side. Yeah. You see, I thought it was in dynamics because it dynamically moves it. It's not. It's in pitch and modulation. Of course, that's the first. That's the first place I'd look. You see, Ray of Emotions thinks the same way I do and thought dynamics. No, it's in pitch and modulation. There's auto pan look. Uh, so yes, and um, I have to say as well that the Live Eleven manual, which you do get as a PDF file in the install is just as obtuse and unhelpful as the Live 10 manual and the Live 9 manual before it. It's written from an engineering point of view because Ableton, being based in Berlin, has a very, very German attitude towards engineering and programming and functionality. And unfortunately, the manual tends to focus on that rather than what you're going to do to get a musical benefit from whatever it is that you've looked up in the user manual. If, in fact, it is even mentioned in the usual user manual, because several of the issues that I've encountered with live so far, I've gone, oh, I wonder what's, what the manual says about that manual doesn't say anything about that at all one of the things was that that the whole thing about creating untitled file names untitled dot als untitled dash one dot als untitled dash two als in the explorer when i was trying to save a default default set it's not in the manual so yeah um that's that's one issue the there are some lovely things they have really really gone to town with some of the packs so for instance one of the packs that you get a free download or that is quite large is this lovely upright piano which has been supplied to ableton courtesy of the lovely people at spitfire audio And yeah, I dropped delay on it because delay. But uh, it's rather a lovely piano. I haven't played with Spitfire's brass quartet and string quartet packs on. But the string quartet is kind of... I'm saving that for the weekend, so that's when I write my string quartet, strangely enough. Riaco Music says, sounds so good. It really does. It really does. I've been taking a another page out of your book. So there are rises and bangs and crashes and all sorts of strange noises. Because this is kind of a bit weird and ethereal and something strange in the woodshed and all the rest, um, I found this lovely sample in, in live uh, that I've used during the bridge. Now 
is that ominous or what? So, yeah, and there's lots of risers and uh, a bunch of explosion sound effects that I found on the internet a while ago, which I really like. Whoops. Riaco Music says, I love little sounds. So do I. I hadn't realised just how much power something that's barely at the threshold of hearing can have in changing the atmosphere of a track because it's there underneath. So there are little sort of, yeah, well, you know all this stuff because I'm basically who, who I'm copying. You are basically who I'm copying. Ah, <sighs> yes, I got there in the end. <laughs> Riaco Music says, yay, you're learning. Yay. Thank you. Yes, I, um, I've i been having good fun and... There are so, so many new bits and pieces in Live 11 that I really need to just knuckle down and, and get to, to understand and know. And that will probably take me three years, because it's three years since Live 10 dropped. That was February the 6th, 2018, if memory serves correctly. So they're, they're coming out with a new version about every three years. And this one will definitely keep me more than happily occupied for the rest of the month, certainly. And as I said today, I just completely went down the rabbit hole with, with stuff. I um, completely lost track of time. I had no idea what to... I eventually thought, you know what, my stomach's rumbling. And, um, yeah, so I, I should really go and get something to eat. Maybe I should go to the Chinese takeaway. No, I'm not going to go to the Chinese takeaway, Chris. You're trying to lose weight. You do not need Singapore fried rice and a couple of crispy spring rolls at this time of night. And you shouldn't be eating heavy meals at 9pm in the evening anyway. So let's not go there. Yeah. So that's my initial adventures with Live 11. There will be more adventures with Live 11 on Sunday night show. I hope by Sunday night show I will also have uh, a couple of the other tracks that I've been working on ready to share with you. Um, Mel has sent me another WAV file for Björk and Kirk in Tesco's so I uh, that's first up in the batting order tomorrow I will be really really looking forward to uh, to channeling Mr Shatner again I've also recorded an awful lot of stuff uh, far more than is ever going to fit in it to uh, our friend Dragon Dreams' house party. And I know Wobby has also been been working on this. And um, from Paul's reaction to what I've produced, I think it should be highly amusing because uh, I, I, Paul is one of those people who can pick up an idea and really run with it. And uh, then he sends something back to me and I then start riffing on that. And, yeah, I'm really looking forward. So this will be the Castle Dragon Dreams house party for 2021. Um, there's a whole bunch of us taking part. I think it's it's been whittled down from the 40 or so guests who said, oh, 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 me, me. But um, I, uh, what... Paul was saying earlier that uh, it will be very much combinations of people, people's contributions being mixed together as if they were on stage jamming together rather than the 2019 one, which was very much more about people just taking the spotlight for eight bars. So I'm really, really looking forward to hearing what Paul's going to do with this because I'm sure it will be fantastic. And I also have my highly Pink Floydized version of um, a track by a couple of other formers. And I'm not going to spoil the surprise and tell you what the track is, but uh, it will, I hope, 
meet their approval and if it does meet their approval then i'll put that on form in the next couple of days and that's so i mean with that track and the dragon dreams track and mel's track i'm now looking as if i'm comfortably going to manage a double form of actually writing 28 songs in the 28 days of February. And I've only ever managed that once since I started taking part. Reaco Music says, I added a glockenspiel since I remember you like that. Oh, abs yeah, the, the Kirk and Björk thing absolutely needs glockenspiel. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really, that's, it's going to be good. So hopefully... Sunday night show, we're going to have some good stuff to share with you. Uh, I will be back here as well again in March on Thursday next week for Twitch live stream, Thursday night live stream number 42. It will have a Hitchhiker's Guide theme to it. I'm not entirely sure how or what that theme will consist of, but it's definitely going to be there nevertheless. But until then, I will bid you a very pleasant and fine good evening. If you're out and about on the town tomorrow, please continue to wear a mask. Uh, and whatever you're doing, please stay well. Stay healthy, stay sane, stay wane, and and look after yourselves. And I will bid you a very pleasant good night. <laughs>